Hello there. Welcome to another video in my series all around Microsoft Exam MB400, the developer's exam for Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform. So we've had a few videos in the series now where we've been looking at things such as solutions, working with entities, relationships, things like that. Now we want to focus on security. Okay, some of the fundamental concepts around managing security within your solutions and the sort of things that you'll need to know about if you're going to be tackling this exam. So we're going to take a look at two things principally today, security roles and field security profiles. We'll see how you go about creating those, what the various options are for them as well. So first of all, security roles, it's one of these things that you sort of, you can sort of do from within the brand new uh, interface for Power Apps, which you can see on here. So for example, we've got the ability of going new, um, other security role, and we can create a security role. It's within the classic interface, but you can essentially get there quickly through the new interface. Now, this is one way in which you create a security role. It's not the way I would recommend that you go about doing it because, as you can see, this is a pretty much a, a very barren security role and you would have to probably spend quite a bit of time tweaking it and adding privileges to it just so you can actually get it to um, get it to work so that when you assign it to a user, they can get into the application and start working with the data um, straight away. So we're just going to discount this for now. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to go into the, the old interface. We're going to go to the gear icon at the top up here click on advanced settings this will open up a new tab for the classic interface for dynamics what was traditionally the dynamics crm application we're going to go up here we're going to go into security over here click on security role and we're going to select an existing security role that we've built out in this that's already available in the system so we're going to click on the common data service user and we're just going to do save save new we'll call this mb uh, 400 security role save that and then from here we can start to work and actually get the various permissions added to the security role as we go along. So on the first screen we can see we've got a few options, well, obviously we can rename the security role at any point. A security role must be associated to at least a single business unit within the application. You can override this but typically you'd want to assign this to the root business unit. It will then filter down through accordingly. You've also got the ability to toggle, okay, how does this role behave when it's assigned to a team? Is it a case that the team member gets all of the team privileges by default or, or can they inherit privileges based on different access levels? You can sort of define and override that here if you so choose. But the main meat of a security role will be on these various tabs on here. As we click on each one, we can see there's all sorts of different um, entities and features that are sort of shown in different areas. So if we jump back onto the core records tab, it's worth first of all just explain okay okay what are these various things here at the top here create read write etc and what what are these various circles in this key down here what do these actually mean so first of all we've got at the at the top level the types of access of privileges that you can actually do in the application so those coming from a database background will probably be familiar with the sort of the, the crud type permissions create read update delete and this is replicated quite well within the application although in this case it's probably crud crud is that a word? Can you say that? Because obviously write in this case is um, substituted instead of um, update. So these privileges are fairly self-explanatory. Let's you create, read, access, write, update, a record, delete it. So these should be fairly self-explanatory. The application has four of the different privilege types that, that you might just need to familiarize yourself with if you come in at this for the first time. So append and append to, these are tied to relationships which we've seen already in one of the previous videos in this series so typically you need to be able to grant the, the permissions not only to relate an entity to another entity but to allow that other entity to be related to in the first place so a good example could be okay with the account and contact entities you need to make sure that you've got append privileges being on that entity to related to a contact record but also as well to make sure that the contact record itself has the append to the relevant append to privileges defined as well. So typically it's a two it's a two step process there to make sure that you can get records related correctly in the way you want to. Moving on from that, you've got the ability okay assign being able to change the user of a, the user or the owner of a particular record. You can define that as a privilege, and then finally share being able to sort of say okay I want to take this record and I want to give you know, Susan access to it for a couple of days and I want to give her these privileges as well associated to it. So these you can define 
for the most part for various different entities some some will be enabled some will not be enabled it will depend on the type of entity and uh, what settings you've also configured for them as well so moving on from there you can see you've got these various circles on here as you click these circles you can see okay they start to actually update they start to actually do something uh, which is quite uh, interesting so what does this mean down here so for each of the various different permissions that you've got you can then define okay well at what sort of level can they actually do this type of mission and this is sort of defined down here by the key down here so for example what you've got is okay you can sort of have it so that okay none okay I, w I want to give no privileges whatsoever so in this case at the moment for the account anybody assigned this role they can't do anything to do with create for this account record it's just completely disallowed and you know completely so moving on from that the next permission up from there will be user so when you enable this on here okay so for this for the account entity at the moment with this enabled we can see I'm able to read any account record that I own in the system and just records that I own not any of the ones that maybe my colleagues in the same business unit might own or have access to just my records I can read moving on from that is the ability okay business unit level so if we were to update the right permission to business unit level on here if assigned this role I can now update any record in the same business unit as me any account record in the same business unit as me and I'll have no restrictions in that regard next step up is parent child business units so you could have it so that okay a um, bit of a strange requirement but you could have it so okay so for any account record not only in the business unit that I exist in but also any ones that are underneath that I've got the ability to delete those records and then finally you've got organization and that is the least restricted privilege it basically just gives you that you do whatever you want almost for that particular permission so I could have it so that okay for create okay I can create records in any different any business unit any account record I can do that particular um, permission in now if you see in most cases on the account entity okay we've got the ability of being able to specify these levels at four different levels other entities though so this one here for example we can see we've just got organization or not, not at all so going back to the one of the earlier videos when we looked at entities and creating them this is dictated by the ownership type of the entity if you've set it to user or team then you'll have the, the ability of being able to do this sort of tiered level access that we see on the account record otherwise if it's just organizational level owned it's literally okay you have to just give all of that privilege or not at all you've not got the ability of having that granular control over that so really you know you have to think carefully when you build out your entities for the first time um, how how the ownership type will potentially affect um, the type of privileges you can grant at a security or level so always take some time to sort of consider that a nice thing you can do this interface as well is okay if I want to very quickly sort of grant the same privileges for across the board for a single entity I can just click on the account and see we can see as we click on it it updates them all in tandem so I can very quickly for example grant user privilege across all of that likewise okay if I wanted to make sure that this particular user could you know write against all these entities again just click on the right header on there and we can see it all updates itself um, for us automatically which is really nice scrolling down to the bottom um, and this will probably be the same across all different tabs you've got the you know miscellaneous permission types so these won't conform to this grid view here that we see here these will typically be for specific features or settings within the application that in most cases you either enable or disable uh, entirely there's no sort of halfway middle ground in terms of being able to do it so for example we publish reports we, we can enable that fully view order history enable that fully we've not got the ability to sort of go okay well I just want this user to just publish reports in the same business unit that they exist that's not possible you have to just give full access to be able to do that and as we go across the different tabs we can see there's various different um, permissions and entities that are exposed a lot of this will be dictated by what apps you've got installed on your common data service instance so in, in so we've not got the sales app installed so that tab's not visible uh, and any sort of entities that you've configured yourself these will appear in the custom entities tab at the end on here so in the previous video we saw okay how to create a booking entity um, in here I can then go in and sort of define the privileges for that when I'm done I just click on save and close at the top on here and then from a solution standpoint what I would then want to do is get this added to the solution so I jump back into our um, into the power apps portal and within there I just want to do add existing security role click on that down there click add and then boom we're away. 
then when it's deployed out to our appropriate environments, we then want to grant it out to our particular user. So again, in the, going back into the classic interface, head back to the security tab, click on users. I'm going to select my user account on here, manage roles, and I'll just grant myself that privilege on there. And then boom, we're away with that. And that's uh, all ready to go and we can start working with the booking entity that we created. So that's security roles. Next thing I want to cover in this video is field security profiles. This is one of these features which is not yet fully available in the new interface. So what we have to do is we have to basically switch to classic. When we do this, this will open up the old solution experience, um, which has a, has a few more available features. It's not as nice looking. It's a bit crap and dated in how it looks. Uh, but, you, but anything you can't do in the classic interface, more than likely you'll be able to do as well. And any changes we make on here will be automatically fed back through to here. Essentially, it's just the, you know, it's looking at the same underlying data. It's just a different view. Is all. So on here, we, what we would do is first of all we go onto our contact entity. And we're just going to find a field that we want to enable for field security profile. So I'm thinking maybe a field like uh, the telephone number or business phone, perhaps. If we just scroll back down to here. Yeah, let's do the business two firm. Let's give that a second to load up. Oh, so that's not enabled for that. Uh, let's try something else. Uh, yeah, department field. So. For field security, there's essentially it's a two-step process. First of all, so what? So first of all, we need to sort of describe. Okay, what is field security? Field security lets you go a next level um, above security roles. So security roles are great at controlling record-level privileges. What field security lets you do is control specific fields on an entity and prevent users from doing specific type of um, actions or activities against them. So you know when you're working with very sensitive. Um, you know, data types, whether it's a person identifiable data types, or maybe, you know, some data categories that fit under, um, you know, PCI DSS, payment card industry, I uh, can't remember the full name of it, but, you know, credit card numbers or things like that, typically you want to make sure that those are secure because there's a real business risk if they get uh, potentially exposed. So what field security lets us do is secure those fields and really have granular control over who can do um, particular actions against them. As, as I said earlier, it's a two-step process to set up. First thing we have to do is actually enable each field that we want for field security in the system. That's just the case, just going into here and just clicking on enable, saving and closing that. And then what we'll want to do at this point is just give it a quick little publish just to make sure that those changes have taken effect. Some, it's a more force of habit thing, but sometimes it can it, it's, uh, might be needed just to make sure that our changes take effect. With that published then, we want to go down to field security profiles. Click on new up there. Uh, first of all, we're going to give this just a name, first of all. So, MB400 field security profile. We're going to save that so it enables some of the controls on there. Then, when we click on the field permissions tab, what we'll see is, is a complete view of every single field that has been enabled for field security in the current common data service instance, regardless of which entity that we have. Um, um, you know, it is in place. So we can see on here we've got one from the user entity, we've got the department field, and also the mobile phone field, which was enabled earlier. Now, I think to remember with field security profiles, if you've not got one specified in place, any field you enable for field security will not be accessible at all to any user. So you have to do think really carefully before you enable that property for the first time. Um, the only user who would have access if a field security profile is not enabled is the system administrator or anybody who has assigned that role within the system. So always make sure that you've got at least one field security profile defined to give people access to stuff. So what we want to do at this point is we want to click on to our department field and we can see we've got the ability of being able to basically, okay, we want to allow or deny, read, update or create privileges. So what we want to say in this particular case is we want to say, okay, we want to let people add data to this field, um, whether it's part, it's part of an update operation or when they're creating it. But once it's been specified, um, it immediately becomes hidden. So we want to deny read on that. So press OK on that. Then with that defined, then the field security profile is effectively ready to go. We just want to give it a quick save up there. And what we would do in as a next step in order to get the permissions applied is we'd want to grant this to either a role or a team. When, 
if you're sort of creating this and packaging this up within a solution, typically you wouldn't do this at this stage, you would deploy it out first uh, and then assign privileges. But just for the completeness sake, what we would then do is just go to add up here and then we'll just add my own user account onto there. And then we can see that's now been enabled for that. But if we save and close that now, uh, our field security profile is in our solution down here. Uh, if we were to close this down, so just do save and close up there, go back to the interface in here, uh, give it just a quick little refresh, we should see our field security profile is, is on there. And then anything on here that's got the little sort of square icon with the arrow icon, that's something that needs to be managed in the classic interface. So as soon as we click on it, we see boom, we go straight back into the um, into the old classic interface. So that's pretty much it for this video. So we've seen hopefully some of the core concepts around working with security roles, the things that you have to bear in mind in terms of the different permission types and the hierarchical nature of security. We've also s described and seen how to set up a field security profile, put that in place as part of a solution. So I hope this video has been really useful. Um, good luck for the exam if you're revising uh, and I'll catch you soon with another video in the series. Cheers.